Hey, Draconix here. Today we're going to teach you how to use a redstone bundle. Now the way these redstone bundle cables work is you send a signal into the cable, a colored signal because there's 16 different colored wires, and it will output to just that color wire. In this case, if we were to send out a pink signal, it would go through the wire, find the pink ones, and put the signal out to this piston generator here. One thing you want to take caution with is when you're doing the bundled cable, strapping it directly to the back of the computer won't work. You'll have to have it to the tile behind the computer because when you send a signal out, it goes back a tile. Let's take a closer look at how these work. In this case, we're going to type in a color. It's going to send a signal out to the blue and pump out whatever dye color that we need, in this case blue. And you can do that with multiple ones too. And we'll have all the different colors that we sent out. So let's take a closer look at how that program runs. Now if we go into the code, you can see that the first thing we do is clear the screen, set the cursor position to 1. That's a normal thing in a lot of programs. And then we'll ask the user to select a color. We're going to assign color select as the variable. And what the statement's generally doing is just telling the person, hey, we're going to look out for what the user types and assign it to color select. And we have an if statement here that's going to double check and see what color you're writing. If it's white, it's going to go and use the rs.setBundledOutput statement to the back. And it's going to assign that the value of colors.white. Now all of the different colors, dot .orange, dot .magenta, dot .light blue that you're seeing here are actual pre-assigned variables. When you type them in, it's going to look up what it has for colors.white and it's going to give it that numerical value. The same with orange, magenta, light blue, etc. They all have their own numbers. Now when you add those numbers together, you can actually put out multiple signals at the same time. So if we wanted to do colors.cyan and colors.purple, we just add the two values together, and that's the number that it's going to put out, or the uh, signal that it's going to put out. We also have a help statement in here, so if the user types in help, it'll give them the available color list. and leave it on the screen for seven seconds before wiping the screen. And we also have an error checker where if nothing registers that it recognizes, it'll let them know that the color choice is wrong and they can type help for the actual colors. The if statement ends right there. And this statement will basically just wipe out any of the output going into the back, which means all of the redstone colors will be set back to no value at all, zero, and just clears the terminal one last time, in case I want to add any more text in there. Now the way we've set up the circuitry is we have the colored wires going to each individual engine. In this case they're set to their die colors to easily demonstrate how this works. And I have the pistons in an alternating arrangement so they don't interfere with one another. And you can see the signal just gets sent directly to the engine it's coordinated with. Now the cool thing about these bundled wires is you can run them for quite a long distance with no problems. Um, if I wanted to, I could have three different black cables going out here, and every one of those black signals would get activated when I have the color black. And uh, basically, you can use 16 different signals 
but if you got tricky with the circuitry, maybe you threw in a few AND things, so green and light blue are required to set off a machine, you could run thousands and thousands of devices just off of one output side. But uh, basically that's it for redstone bundles. And we'll get into some more advanced statements in another video. Hope you enjoyed.